My whole thing, as you guys get to know me, there are people here who know me and have known me for a long time. But as you get to know me, there's a couple of important things to know about me. Yes, I'm a smart ass. Uh, yes, I make a lot of stupid analogies and metaphors and jokes, but there's a purpose behind them because they're accurate. Uh, but number two, no matter how much something I might say, and it may happen today, that aggravates you or frustrates you, just know I'm not trying to aggravate or frustrate you, and I'm always on the side of the actor. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done this book, and I wouldn't have done it under the premise of Seven Deadly Sins, which is why this show is the sub part of the title, The Actor Overcomes. We have a lot as a community to overcome. And there's a reason for that. It's not necessarily anybody's fault. Um, we can point to a lot of factors, but the truth of the matter is, you guys, we have a lot to overcome just by nature of the profession and because it is so subjective. So with that said, here we go on Demo Reel Review. Now, first and foremost, uh, everybody know that back in the day, Sheeta! Uh, back in the day at the Actors Network, this subject, this topic, uh, was something I did for two and a half hours. And I could do ten hours. And some point down the road on the YouTube channel, I will actually do an entire video on how you truly go about editing a demo reel. Not the point for today. All the IG live shows that I'm doing are meant to be a cliff notes of certain subjects for you guys to have a sense of something. So where we are today, look at Sue, look Sue's in the house. Good to see you, Sue. Ping all your people. Um, so that cover magazine cover right behind me back there, City of the Country. Uh, I'm on it because of Sue Magai. Thanks, Sue. Um, so just know that yes, a demo reel is a given. This is now a part of our um, tool belt that everybody expects us to have. And I completely get that. I do. But there's a big but, and I mean a big but, a big but, a lot of junk in the trunk on this one. But here's a Kevinism for you, and I have many of them. A bad demo reel is worse than no demo reel at all. And you're going to have to trust me on that. I'm on your side. But I'm just sharing with you, as the old cliche goes, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. If someone's first impression of you as a performer at any level, in any city, globally, that's why I call us Global Thespians Unite, or also the good crazy. Um, if your demo reel is not up to professional contemporary standards in lots of ways, sound, lighting, the whole nine, not even your talent, uh, you're burning in an image as a first impression that is going to be hard to remove. Why? Because there are too many of us. That's why. So the concept or belief that, well, I know I need a demo reel before I do anything, I do not agree. Be careful about having a demo out there that someone might see that is substandard to professional contemporary standards, okay? That's statement number one. Now, standard edited master of a demo in the United States. I know that in Europe and other countries, they sometimes are more open to a demo reel being longer in time, such as, say, five minutes. But in the U.S., you typically do not want to have an edited master that has multiple pieces of work on it uh, longer than two minutes. One of the other things about demo reels is we've gotten to a place now, and this started a while back, and this is... This is driven by places that we pay money, but it doesn't make it smart. It doesn't make it uh, a way to do it. Yes, we. Uh, I say it all the time. This is a Kevin E. West cliche. Just because something's possible doesn't make it a good idea. Okay? You can, I make this joke all the time, you can be married and pregnant inside of 30 minutes. That does not necessarily mean that you should marry that person or have a child with them. So that's ha-ha if you were sitting in a room with me. But the point being is, is that just because you have the ability to record yourself or the ability to put something up that you say is a demo reel does not mean you necessarily should. And to that end, we've gotten the place where we're putting clips up of just the show or the thing or whatever it is we've done. And the truth of the matter is that that's one way to go about it. But it's a lot you're asking people to do extra work versus what your representative may have as tools to submit you for. 
You have to discern the two different. And I'm always coming from the place about stuff like this where what have you done as a setup of your house in terms of a demo reel? So I would always encourage you to make sure that no matter how many pieces of material you have or no matter how many clips you've done of a show or a thing or a moment that's comedy versus drama versus whatever, I'm encouraging you to realize having an edited master, whether you want that edited master to be theatrical or commercial, and if you have enough material to have an edited master that's two minutes long of just drama theatrical, or comedy theatrical, because we say theatrical in terms of film and television, you have at it. But just having a series of clips only is not a recommendation of mine at all. And then here's the other thing, y'all. The other thing is we, <laughs> this is part of the problem with demo reel. We, we now have all sorts of places to put demo reels. Holy shit balls, as I say all the time. But this is also a problemo. We are, we are told, hey, Arl, hey, good, good to see you, Z. Um, we are told all the time, you know, get your demo reel up. Okay, cool. I'm down with you getting your demo reel up. It's awesome. But one of the most important things that I'm going to cover today is how anybody is going to see your demo reel. Now, I understand the idea behind, the logic behind, well, the more places I have it, yes, the more places people are to likely be able to accidentally, even though there's 500 hours, uh, five, yeah, 500 hours of footage uploaded to YouTube every minute or every hour of every day, whether it's a minute or an hour, it's a whole bunch. So I'm not disagreeing with you. You could have your demo reel on IMDb. You're going to have your demo reel on various casting sites that you pay for a membership to. You can have a demo reel up. Uh, in other locations inclusive of your own website. You could have your demo reel up. You could post it, you know, ad nauseum if you want on LinkedIn or on your Twitter account or put it up on your IG. You can put demo material in lots of places. Absolutely not debating it. My question is, was, and always has been. First and foremost is the lighting and the sound and the work CPS up to contemporary professional standards. And what that means is it has to at least look and sound from a lighting standpoint as proficient and solid as broadcast television. That's what CPS means. That's number one. I can't get into whether or not you look good or seem talented on the material because I could never do that unless somebody actually showed it to me. But my concern for the concept of having a demo reel is the idea that are we, this is my setup versus pursuit, are we just happy with, just happy with putting a demo reel up? Is that really the goal? Because last I checked, the whole purpose, the whole value of having a demo reel up is to actually have somebody who's a legitimate professional who could then become aware of your existence and consider you for a project, et cetera, et cetera, actually see it or watch it. Whether it's an agent, a manager, casting director, producers, directors, et cetera. Think of it like this. Yeah, here you go, here you go. Let me get a little sip of coffee working in here. I got one for you. Think about it like this. So think of it, uh, I don't know if you own a house, but let's pretend you do, even if you don't. Think of it like this. If you were to be selling your house, and in this scenario, the demo reel is the house, and you were to put a sign up in your front yard at your house that said, house for sale, and you put it up right there, the only people that would know you were selling your house are the people in your neighborhood, the people who know you. So an example of this would be, yes, you can always get your pals and your friends and your family to go watch your demo reel, but is someone who's your friends or family or on your street, metaphorically, going to, the people, going to be the people that are going to potentially buy your house? And chances are the answer is no. Now, the house metaphor works up to a point because, of course, you would want to list your house 
uh, so that people could find it. And there's a common belief system that there's a main place to actually post your demo reel so you can be found. And in America, that's IMDb. But I would also debate and argue with you that your demo, you should always have your own website, kevinewest.com. Boom. You got to have that. Because when you promote your demo reel for people to go find it, see, this is not what we do as much with selling houses. We have an agent. We have a listing. But you have to realize that there are lots of people out there looking perhaps to buy a home. The agent producer casting community doesn't tend to naturally make proactive efforts to go out to find unknown actors and their demo reels. They will if they're told to, or they will if they want to, but it's not the same as someone trying to find a house to buy. It's very different. So you have to take into consideration the very first challenge with demo reels, which is who's looking for me? Who's going to ever find me? That's part of the problem with when you think of demo reel review. That's why having a demo reel, creating a demo reel, editing a demo reel for anything you do. I don't care if you're a stand-up comic. doesn't matter to me if you're an improv artist. doesn't matter to me, like I said, if it's commercials. Whatever it is that is a moving business card, which is what a demo reel is, it's, your, it's the way you can sell something, uh, it's most notably yourself, and or make somebody aware of, as I like to say with the pencil, your product. This is you. This is me. People have to know that pencil is available. But how is someone going to find you in the mayhem of social media, in the mayhem of the internet? I mean, it's crazy town. So the bottom line is, if you are going to, what's up, PM? Paul Mish in the house. Um, if you are going to have somebody actually see your demo reel, then you are unfortunately going to have to do some proactive efforts. This is why I call it the pursuit. You're going to have to do some proactive efforts to get people to watch your reel. And one of the dangers in that is I still would recommend when you're promoting your demo reel, don't have any more than two links to it. Maybe IMDb if you're in the United States. And if you're outside of that, if there is a, if that's the case for you there, use it there. But I'm an advocate of just having people go to my website. Just go to my website. We all know you can find somebody in IMDb. But have a very simple actor website and a simple URL. One click. And boom, it goes right to it. This is one of the challenges I have philosophically with the idea of having multiple clips. You're talking about, guys, think about who we're trying to have see our demo reel. 99.99% of the time, they are strangers to us. And you're asking someone who doesn't know you when actors are literally a dime a dozen as a cliche, meaning there are way too many of us for every job that's available that doesn't require a celebrity or a star name. There are way too many of us in virtually every single category of human being ever invented. So you have to start psychologically. That's why I'm such a big psychology guy. You have to start with, as you would in any form of sales, and go, who's your audience? What are they thinking about? What is their daily life like? What is the likelihood they would ever find my demo reel on their own? And that likelihood is very, very, very low. It just is. So when you go down the road of how am I going to get, I have a demo reel, cool. I followed Kevin's instructions and I made an edited master that's two minutes long, that's just for film and television or that's one minute long with a couple of my commercials on it, okay, cool. But when you post it on your website or post it on IMDb, yes, you're, if you have a representative, they will use it as a tool to submit or with a submission. I'm talking about what you can do, people. So my thing is, what are you doing to actively get someone to find you? This is why Twitter can be helpful. Because if you have a Twitter account that's specifically about you as an actor, you can post and repost like once a week your demo reel. 
and you can tag other people. Maybe somebody will watch it. There's lots of ways to go about driving traffic to your demo reel professionally. Um, but doing it in a massive large group isn't always necessarily the best play. This is why just last, uh, just before, I covered target lists with you guys. And this is why you want to start targeting who do you want to see you? That's the question. What's your niche? What are you really trying to pursue in this profession? Because if you want to be on Saturday Night Live, there's only a handful of people that would be looking at that kind of content you may have based on an improv show or based on an improv class or a school that you're at. This is why specificity, or as I call it, area of industry matters so much. I'm not going to promote my theatrical demo reel, which is mostly our drama episodic television in the United States of America. I'm not going to push that to people in the commercial industry most of the time. But I'm also not going to push it to someone in casting who spent 30 years casting half-hour comedies. This is why this industry is far more specific than we like to believe that it is. We kind of want to brush stroke over who's going to look at our demo reels. And so I'm just sharing with you that the reality is your location of your demo reel and how you're going to have people find you ultimately becomes the thing. Because as my good friend Walker from New York says, there's always a thing. Isn't it? And ain't that right, Chris? Um, always the thing. So when you start looking at your demo reel, you, yes, you have to put it together first. And that's why I could spend five hours on this conversation with regards to putting a demo reel together. Just remember this on that subject real fast. Just remember, y'all, your demo reel is its like remodeling a room of your house. That's what it's like. I always use the house thing, right? If you're going to do a remodel on your house, you have two things involved with that. Two things. There's the construction company who's going to do the work, but there's the blueprint they're going to follow. So remember this about your demo reel before you even sit down to edit it or if you go back to recut something the next time and you've never done this before. It's a huge important key to me. You are the architect of the blueprint of your demo reel. Someone who has the title of editor, even if it's you, but if you pay somebody to edit, their job is to edit, meaning their job is to follow your instructions not be the creative mind of putting your soup together. Demo reels, y'all, are just chicken soup. There's 500 ways to make chicken soup. There'd be 100 ways to edit your demo reel based on whatever material you have. But there are only two or three ways to do it where it's the most intelligent in terms of the business acting community today. So understand, editor's job is not to figure out how you want that extra bedroom or that bathroom remodeled. You have to design a blueprint. The editor is the construction company, y'all. That's a Kevinism from way back in the day. I first said that 25, 26 years ago, and I've been saying it ever since. And many people who know me that you might see out on the interweb talking about the business may say that too, because why? Well, <laughs> because I started doing this in 91, that's why. Um, but the construction company, that doesn't mean you should never listen to a comment or two that, let's say, a head of a construction company has about your design. Maybe they go, you know, I get it on the blueprint and I know what you were trying to do, but what about this idea as a person who knows construction? I'm not saying for you to never, what's up, Joey? I'm never saying to never listen to your editor. But what I found in my career is that almost 95 plus percent of actors tend to rely on, count on, and or even worse, expect the editor to create the vision of their demo reel. That is intrinsically incorrect. It's just simply incorrect. That is not their job. That is not what you're paying them for. You are paying them because they know how to use, again, metaphor, they know how to use a hammer. They know how to use, you know, a miter box and a blade saw they know how to use a nail gun. They know how to put together mechanically 
your demo reel in a non-linear premiere, you know, Adobe environment, iMovie environment. Maybe you have become an iMovie expert. That's cool if you do it yourself, which even goes to tell you that if you edit your own demo reel, then you are both the blueprint and the construction company. And so you get my point. But even still, when you put that house out on the market, how's anybody going to find it? Because you don't have the kind of SEO engine as an individual actor that, say, Zillow does for having your house find buyers. You have to go find the buyers of us. So do I. It doesn't matter how many credits I have, y'all. Matter of fact, I'm getting ready to recut my reel as we speak. And I'm still going to have to push it out to people to make sure that they know it's there. It's just what you have to do. So you got to realize that part of demo reel review, this is my setup versus pursuit thing that you'll see in the very first IG live that I did. If you go all the way back, just go back to the first one I did like three weeks ago where I had uh, my buddy Will Roberts on with me as a guest. Go back to setup versus pursuit. Getting all your material, all of your footage, and sitting down just like grocery shopping and making a meal, right? And cutting your demo reel is just the setup. It's a task to even begin to have a demo reel. The pursuit part, y'all, is how are you going to get people to watch it, man? Okay? This, this is the key. This is why I'm such an advocate of always creating relationships. Yes, it's a simple request. I recommend you use a little bit of their ego, natural human ego on that part, for you to be able to make a note if you're sending it electronically and you're choosing to do this with a link and just say, um, respect your career and your history in the business and would very much appreciate it if you can spend two minutes watching the reel and if you have, to have any feedback or criticism, I'm happy to accept it. You can present it that way. It's perfectly fine. You can just do it, obviously, as a straight submission to a casting person if you're doing it electronically and say, would love the opportunity to read for your show. Agents and managers would love the opportunity to meet with you regarding your client list, meaning client list, not seeking representation. Um, hey, Mara. Um, you can do that because... You're more than welcome to just say, listen, I'd, I'd like the opportunity to meet with you about your client list, meaning becoming an actual client based on that meeting, but getting the meeting based on the demo reel. There's lots of ways to go about asking. Same with producers, directors, showrunners, executives, development executives. Your goal always, and this is why we believe this is all an agent and manager's job, and they get 10%, man, maybe 15, depending. But that leaves 85, 90% to you. People say all the time in Hollywood, I've been saying this for 26, seven years. Oh, it's who knows you, man. And I've been saying for 26, 27 years, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. And this is the way they get to know you is with your demo reel. But it's got to meet all those standards along the way. And then you have to go intelligently about trying to get people to watch it. And people ask all the time, well, bro, how am I going to do that? Man, it requires a game plan. It requires work. This is why I cover a lot of the how stuff on the YouTube channel and, and the, the material that you'll find there. The Kevin E, same thing. You can subscribe over there. Please do if you haven't. Um, but and I also have stuff on a premium blog that I'm doing, KevinEWest.com. It's going to be crazy town everywhere. I'm fully in the comeback mode, took some time away from doing biz of showbiz, but y'all, I've been here since 91, just so you know. I've been doing this kind of thing specifically, and so much of Hollywood has changed, Hollywood metaphor for the whole world, and so much hasn't. And in this area of demo reel, it is the exact same problem and challenge and struggle and obstacle that I faced in 1988 when I cut my first demo reel. It hasn't changed. How am I going to get the legitimate people to watch it that I want to see it? That issue has not... Hey, Nabila. Um, again, guys, I, I'm really specific on my time uh, in that I, I try to keep it you know, up to 9.30 PST. So 
Uh, just know that I am putting the lives on my grid if you're coming in late. Uh, I'm born in 88. Nice. Uh, well, we could re-edit your baby video, uh, your birth video. So, but it's the same challenge. This shit hasn't changed, y'all. This is no different than, than a lot of things in life. The process of certain things is just what they are. And non-star, non-celebrity, I don't care how many credits you have if you're not a star. Getting people to watch, take the time to watch your demo reel is difficult. And that's a huge part of demo reel review. It's not just getting the demo reel done, man. You can go grocery shopping. You can wash and clean and prepare all of the food. But you still got to make it. And then there has to be people if you want to eat it. You spend, yes, getting the demo reel done right and well is huge. But the whole thing will always be, how are you going to get folks you need to know you exist as a product, as an actor, in any city in the world, how are you going to get them to watch it? So what I'm sharing with you is please do not leave that out. This is what happens to us. We get very focused on just the setup. Well, I got the demo reel done. Check. I read someone's book somewhere that said, have a demo reel. So I have one. Okay. That's like having a car with no gas. Where are you going to go? You can get the car, but where are you going? The demo reel is ultimately about destination happiness. Where is it going to land? Who's going to see it? Because you're going to put it up in all, in all the normal places. Your website, IMDb, wherever. All the casting sites you may have. eTalenta in Europe, etc. You're going to put it up someplace. That's fine. But the question becomes, how are you going to get people to see it? So that's a whole other IG Live. That's a whole other conversation. Um, yes, market research. <laughs> I needed to hear this. Oh, cool. Well, like I said, guys, get all your people here. Start tagging your people, pinging your people. Get them. Follow me on IG Live. Make sure you make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel right now, the Kevin E. Um, because the how the long conversation of how to create associations and build your spider web, which are all my phrases I've been using for decades, that stuff's coming. But it's going to be coming more on. The I on the, the YouTube channel because I'm going to be breaking up these conversations into six part, 10 minute conversations, hour long on the subject. So there's a quickie about the overview and the review of the conversation of demo reels. Um, and so I want to make sure that I got that in today. It'll be on the grid. It's 931. I like to stick to the time because I want to respect everybody's time always, but it'll be there. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to be here on Friday at 9 o'clock. And I'm probably going to do showbiz scenarios again with my man, Paul Jackson, where he presents two problems for me and we solve them for us live. So you guys have a great couple of days. I'll see you on Friday. Kick ass. Tell all your friends and enemies, enemies, friends of your enemies, get them all here. We'll see you guys on Friday. Peace.